welcome to the first tutorial for the level two certificate in creative craft cookery. This is the tutorial that should be watched before you complete workbook one, session one. And the practical you'll be completing for this session is the scones practical. Um, one thing I wanna say before you start working through your course is to get into the habit of trying to work through the booklet in the order of the tasks that are set. And what I mean by that is it's really tempting to just do all the practical fun stuff and leave out the quite important written work as well, which we'll be teaching you and developing your subject knowledge and helping you to become better chefs. So work through the workbook in the right order because there will be tasks that ask you to think back on what you've done in previous practical lessons. Um, and so by completing the workbook in the right order, all that information is going to be fresh in your memory and make it a lot easier for you to do. So what are we talking about in today's tutorial? Okay, so a couple of things. I want to talk to you about one of the techniques you're gonna be using for this recipe, and you're also gonna be using it for your next recipe, and it's called the rubbing in technique. So I'm gonna show you what that's all about. I'm also gonna be talking to you about something really important that all chefs should know about before they start cooking, and that's personal hygiene. So it's a really important topic. Um, and we're going to be doing a little bit on the adult feedback. So in your booklet, if you have a flick through, you'll see that there's a section for a supervising adult to be giving you feedback on your practical work. So you need to have someone in mind who is going to be observing you when you do your practical sessions and somebody who can give you some feedback that's gonna help you get even better and give you tips and advice on what you could do better next time to improve. So make sure they watch that part of the tutorial. And then finally, I'm gonna give you some tips and help with how you should write your evaluation after you've cooked your practical session. So I hope you're really excited to get started. I can't wait to see what you produce. So let's get going. So let's get started with the first technique that you're going to use to make your scones, the rubbing in technique. This is basically where you rub a fat and a flour together to make a breadcrumb like mixture. In this instance, the fat we're using is butter. So before you start, obviously your hands need to be cleaned thoroughly. You're going to be using your hands for this technique. I've got my butter and flour together in a bowl here. It's best to use chilled butter for this technique. You may want to break it down into smaller pieces before you begin, like I'm doing here. When you start mixing the butter and the flour together, you're using your fingers and your thumbs. It's important not to get the mixture onto your palms if you can help it. The heat and the moisture from your hands will affect the mixture. So as much as possible, you are literally just pushing the butter and the flour together using your thumbs and your fingers. As you do this, you want to slightly bring the mixture up away from the base of the bowl. The reason for this is that you're adding air into the mixture, which helps with aeration, and that's what will help the scones to rise when they're cooking. This may take you a little while. You just have to be patient with it. Every now and then, you might want to give the bowl a little tap. This will bring up the larger pieces of butter from the bottom of the mixture and make it easier for you to find them. Before you attempt to make your own batch of scones, you need to watch through this tutorial to the end. This will give you important information about personal hygiene and will also give information to your supervising adult about what sorts of things they need to be writing about on your evaluation. If you've previously completed the Level 1 Award in Creative Craft Cookery, you can jump straight to the next part of the tutorial. If not, you need to use the following link or search for the Level 1 Award Creative Craft Cookery Personal Hygiene video on YouTube. We're now going to discuss the type of feedback that your supervising adult needs to write in your workbook for you. So if they're not in the room, you might want to go and get them now. So technically, there's no right or wrong way of writing the adult feedback, but there are some good suggestions for how you can do this in a way that will help your child to develop even further. Within this practical session, it would be great to see your opinion on how your child has worked safely and hygienically throughout the practical. So separating those two issues, there's a difference between how to work safely and how to work hygienically. It would be great if you could comment on how they organise their time, whether they're quite methodical, did they tidy as they go, or did they need prompting, for example. 
It's fine if at this stage in the course they need that extra support. This is a progressive course, so they have opportunities to develop those skills later on. How independently did your child work? Were they able to use the oven safely themselves or did they need a little bit of assistance from you, for example? And then the last part of the feedback should be on the back of a taste test from the scones themselves. So for a start, what were the appearance of the scones? Can you give any suggestions for how they could make it even better? And then of course, the taste of the end product, not forgetting to comment on the texture as well. As the student, you need to write your own evaluation on your dish. Now there's an importance in writing evaluations and reflecting on how you've done. This will help you determine what you need to do to improve and get even better. When you're writing your evaluation, it's important to be specific. Try to avoid using words such as good, bad and nice. As the person reading your feedback, that doesn't really give me much information about your end products. I don't have the benefit of being able to taste test your scones, so I need that to be described to me. So use as descriptive language as you can. Add depth to your answers by explaining how and why. As an example of this, instead of writing something like, I worked hygienically, which is a fair enough statement on its own, if you wanted to add depth to that response, you might go on to say, I worked hygienically by removing all jewellery and washing my hands with hot soapy water. In that sentence, you've explained how you worked hygienically. You could follow it up by saying, I did this to remove any dirt and potential bacteria. So in that sentence, you've explained why you did it. You may want to do some additional research using the internet, but otherwise you should now have most of the information you need to be able to safely and confidently complete session one of workbook one and create your lovely batch of scones. I can't wait to see what you do.